that man has one body in Christ. Let us, let us all sing together in number 512, Matthew and Oh God, who finally had to 
intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, prepare the worthy dwelling for your son. Grant, we pray that as you pre preserved her from every state by virtue of the death of your son, which you foresaw, so through her intercession, we too may be cleansed and admitted to your presence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. After the man, Adam, had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then God asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I have forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman whom you put here with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? And the woman answered, The serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. The man called his wife Eve because she became the mother of all the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ in accord with the favor of his will for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him, we are also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will so that we might exist for the praise of his glory, we who first hoped in Christ. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you. 
We just heard the story of how Jesus was conceived, how through the power of the Holy Spirit, through Mary's willingness to carry him and nurse him and raise him, the Son of God took on human flesh. She did not conceive Jesus through the love of a husband, but through the special love of God. Since this is what today's gospel is all about, many people think this is what today's feast of the Immaculate Conception is about, but it's not. Today's feast is about when Mary was conceived. It is only fitting that the mother of the Son of God would be untouched by any stain of sin. The main reason we hear today's gospel on this feast is because of the greeting of the angel that's in there. Hail, full of grace. It fits so beautifully with what it is we have come together to celebrate. My sisters and brothers, from the first instant of Mary's life within her own mother, she was without sin. She was fully open to God's grace. In order to better understand what this means, we are told the story of our first parents, who also came into this world free from sin. We forget about that because of we, we know what happens afterward. They lived in paradise, a symbol of the abundance of God's graces and blessings to his created beings. Although God blessed them as he did, God also had the power to make demands on them. And that's what is meant by the command not to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge. However, they realized that God was far superior to them, greater than them, and they were envious. Can you imagine a human being being envious of anyone else? And that's what is meant by that command. And another creature who happened to be there took advantage of this and went to them, recognized their envy, and then told them that if they did what God forbade them to do, they would be as powerful as God. There's a temptation for you. They bought that lie. And as a result of that, history, salvation history, changed. Once they did, they were filled, as we are told, they were filled with guilt and shame and remorse. They were fearful of what was going to happen because of the things that they now knew and understood. They lost most of the wonderful gifts and blessings that God had given to them as gifts. Having lost them, here's the important part for us. They could not pass them on to their children. Consequently, we are born into a sinful race, having inherited that loss of God's grace a loss that sticks to us like a germ or a defective gene. Mary, however, was especially favored. That's what we're here celebrating. She was created without sin. Not only was she free from sin and full of grace from the first moment of her existence, but throughout her whole life, she was full of grace. On every occasion, at every moment, her attitude toward God was, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to your word. Which, by the way, if we go back to the Greek and translate it, it translates a little bit more accurately to saying, calling herself the slave of God, who is my master. That's something that's gotten lost along the way, just how deeply Mary was affected and how much she had given herself over to what it was that was being asked of her. And that is why Mary is the Immaculate Conception, and that is what today's feast is all about. Adam and Eve's sin, what we call the original sin, did not touch her. And she always responded positively whenever God asked anything of her. The brief things that we know about her from the scriptures bear that out time and again. 
Still, even though Mary got a head start in this life of holiness, we are not excluded from it. We are not excluded from growing in relationship and becoming close to our loving God. Through baptism, we are filled with God's grace, God's life, spiritual uh, awakening, if you will, that takes place when we open ourselves to the love of God that is being offered to us. And we too, as a result, can grow in holiness. How do we do it? By learning to say yes to God, as Mary did, whenever God asks things of us. Think about that for just a few moments. church, that we may strive to follow the example of Mary in responding to God's word, we pray to the Lord. Lord For the people of the United States, as we turn to our patroness, the Immaculate Virgin Mother of Mary, the Immaculate Virgin Mother Mary, seeking her intercession on our behalf, we pray to the Lord. Lord For women who are expecting that they may have the strength and support as they nurture their babies in the womb, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all those who are sick, for their families and friends, and for all who bring care to them in their need, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all those who have died, especially those for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord for couples who long for children, for children who long to have a family, for all those bearing new life, we pray 
the Lord. For all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. And for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, we pray to the Lord. Our brothers and sisters, I now invite you to pray with me in prayer for religious vocations, which you will find inside of our cover for you to come. Let us pray for vocations. O oh God, God, we earnestly beseech thee to bless the church with many priests, deacons, brothers, and sisters who love you with their whole strength, be faithful to their vocation, and gladly spend their entire lives to teach your truths, serve your church, and make you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children. Choose from our homes those who are needed for your work. Mary, be with the clergy. Pray for us, pray for our priests, deacons, seminarians, and religious. Obtain for us many more. Amen. sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our, our good and the good of all his holy church. church. <clears throat> Graciously accept the saving sacrifice we offer you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate 
conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and grant that, as we profess her on account of your preeminent grace, to be untouched of any stain of sin, and through her intercession we may be delivered from all our faults. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you preserved the most blessed Virgin Mary from all sin, from the stain of original sin, so that in her, endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might prepare a worthy mother for your son and signify the beginning of the church, his beautiful bride without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure virgin, was to bring forth a son, the innocent lamb who would wipe away our offenses. You placed her above all others to be for your people an advocate of grace and a model of holiness. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, like the dew falls. So that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Dennis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My sisters and brothers, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called 
to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but one only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, heal us. Heal in us the wounds of that fault for which it is singular way you preserved, Blessed Mary, in the sacrament of conception. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And may the Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord. Together, let us pray the prayer.